From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Levanka and welcome to Studio Bergen. In this half hour, we'll look at the news, events, and people making headlines at Bergen Community College. We begin today with the culmination of a major capital improvement project, the Student Center renovation. On October 18th, college and local officials, including Bergen County Executive Kathleen Donovan, took the wraps off the $5.5 million facility that not only improves access to Bergen's main building, the Pitkin Education Center, but will also provide new space for student clubs, activities, events, and social gatherings. A cafe punctuated by a curved wall of glass focal point, a new welcome desk, and energy efficient design practices are some of the highlights. At the opening, reactions were overwhelmingly positive. I'm excited because I've been waiting for a long time. I was here at Bergen and I saw the old student center and I've been here throughout the construction and we've been writing about it in the paper. So I'm finally able to see how beautiful it is and it's environmentally friendly and I would just love to see more of the students and for the clubs to build better because of the student center. It's just such wonderful, beautiful space and I know our students are gonna love it and they're going to make good use of it. You know, we've missed this space for all this time where we've always gathered and had programs and it's nice to have it back. And I'm so grateful that it was a gorgeous day and let's truly enjoy this space, as was said. It's an ex tremendously exciting day for the students, for the faculty, for the administration. It's been long in coming and we're just so excited with it. The renovation adds 31% more interior space to the previous center and also features widened wheelchair accessible ramps and Wi-Fi. Also making news this month is a major grant that Bergen has secured for Hispanic students entering science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. The $3.8 million award from the U.S. Department of Education will provide Bergen with the resources to recruit students for these STEM fields, improve student outcomes for those already enrolled, and better prepare students for transfer to four-year schools. The five-year project and grant was approved at the October meeting of the college's Board of Trustees. October also marked the college's annual Latino Heritage Celebration with a slate of activities, events, and speakers designed to honor the contributions of Latinos and recognize their cultural significance. The Philip Siarco Jr. Learning Center, the college's Hackensack location, participated in the month-long celebration by hosting the third annual iCal Festival, Por Aquí, Por Aya which included an art exhibit featuring more than a dozen local Latino artists. The art was hung in the center's first floor hallways for the past month. Bergen also recognized its high achieving Latino NJ star students at an October 19th dinner as part of the Heritage Month. The students who graduated in the top 15% of their high school classes were congratulated on their accomplishments by many in attendance, including Dean of Arts, Humanities and Wellness, Amparo Cotting. These are students who have graduated in the top of their class and uh, have met the requirements to be members of, the, of this group of students and they also need to keep a very high GPA. They need to maintain academic excellence. Believe it or not, registration for Bergen's Winterim and Spring 2012 semesters is now underway. With the Winterim session, students can earn a semester's worth of credits in less than three weeks. The classes are a great opportunity for students to make use of their winter break, even if they attend a college other than Bergen. To register, visit A129 on campus or visit go.bergen.edu. Winterm classes begin January 2nd at Bergen Community College Lyndhurst, and spring classes begin January 23rd at main campus. Well, it's November, and if your yard is anything like mine, it's probably full of leaves. If you hire a landscaper to rake them, there's a good chance one of longtime faculty member Dr. Steve Fisher's former students may own the company. We talked with Dr. Fisher in this month's Faculty Focus. Uh, some of these landscapers have gone very large into the business aspect and have almost uh, separated themselves from horticulture. They've got 60, 70, some even 80 uh, employees and um, many of them are on our advisory board and uh, some big names in the area that started here at Bergen uh, with their little mower and their pickup truck and 
a few other things and have um, professionalized themselves through coming to the college and have now large businesses that employ our students. Better yet, Dr. Fisher said his program helps students gain an edge because of what they learn in the classroom. What we're finding out is, of course, that the consumer wants to have an educated um, person on their property. And they don't want just that shrugging of shoulders where, what is that? I don't know. What, what's causing that? I don't know. Uh, so they come here and one of the first things they're taught is uh, where to get the answers. You know, and the answers may not all be in books. They may be in, in seeing some of the, or talking with some of the people who we bring into the classroom uh, and learning from a whole source of, of different, uh, you know, uh, opportunities. The hands-on experience learned in the college's greenhouse rivals the environment future plant experts will find in the real world. This is a state-of-the-art greenhouse that you would probably not see in any type of commercial establishment. Uh, it has a heated floor. It has uh, supplemental heating that at a moment's notice could satisfy uh, whatever uh, needs to be done. Uh, lighting is sort of two different phases. We have a high intensity discharge lighting for when we need to have things like seeds germinating and uh, cuttings being given, uh, especially like when we get this period of uh, several days of cloudiness. Plants want to have a little bit more light, a little more energy given to them, so we'll put on um, you know, the light system. We have some hydroponic facilities where we demonstrate how things are done without soil, uh, how vegetable crops and that are grown, uh, and now even some of our ornamentals are grown without soil. Uh, so it, it's a great teaching opportunity. In fact, it's listed as a laboratory. This is a teaching laboratory you know, for our students. Dr. Fisher also imparts to his students the importance of giving back, including numerous fundraisers. We have a uh, scholarship uh, program where our students receive scholarships, uh, and the way we are able to afford those are through fundraisers. And we do, uh, starting in the uh, summer, we grow a mum crop, which we have a mum crop uh, that's now uh, being sold. Uh, we do a uh, design, um, a Thanksgiving design centerpiece, uh, which is sold through the staff and the faculty here. Uh, we do a, a Christmas display. Uh, we have an open house where we invite people down. They get to see some of the things our students do. Again, it's all student operated and motivated for purposes of giving them uh, a little more of a feeling that they can accomplish something. When it comes down to it, the career is about passion for a lifer like Fisher or for a student starting out. The joy of it changing, the four seasons in a garden, uh, and also seeing new things. Every year there's new things coming out. There's new practices, new uh, things that, you know, you, uh, you rethink. I rethink, and I've been in this industry, you know, 40 years. You know, I grew up in this industry, but you don't have to have that background. You don't have to have been part of a, you know, a family business or such to, you can start your own right here and now. And that's, I think, what many parents are looking to say. If you want to do this and you've done it in high school and you want to do it in college, then Bergen's the place to come. Coming up after a short break, we'll look at what's going on at the College's Southern Bergen facility in Lyndhurst, where more than 4,000 seats are filled this semester after comprehensive renovations. We'll also look at this month's campus calendar and speak with English professor Ellen Feig in studio. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Levanka. Bergen Community College's Lindhurst location keeps growing. This semester, more than 4,000 seats are filled in 163 classes. The facility, which was purchased by the college last year, has undergone numerous renovations in order to support the larger student population. Director of the location, Dr. Ron Milan, recently took us on a tour showing off the renovations to the building, which include a complete refurbishment of the fourth floor, the construction of new student service functions, a lounge, and classrooms. Other renovations are on their way. It's something very rewarding to see something start from nothing and really grow. Um, I came here in 2008 and it just had a small area and now we have 125,000 square feet. Um, we have over 40 classrooms. Um, the science lab is going to be awesome. The conference center on the fifth floor in, um, in the future stage of development is positive. So I mean there's so much just to see it. It's like being a, a parent to, someone, to a child. Before we look at some of the November events in campus calendar, let's go back to one of last month's highlights, the Women's Institute Conference. Approximately 100 attendees were treated to career, health, and wellness advice at a keynote address by Tracy McDaniel, the CEO of Choose New Jersey, who said the Garden State is ripe for business. There's no better time to be in the state than today. And why? Because it is a great state. We're moving in the right direction. We have a great story to tell and diversity, particularly access to a strong network of woman-owned businesses is a tremendous asset for this state. Director of the Women's Institute, Bergen Sandy Soroka, said the group has become a great resource for local women professionals. Today, the Women's Institute has grown. We have uh, 10 board members, all women who are in business, and uh, the, we, we do many different things. We have our own scholarship, and we also uh, have mentoring programs every month. Now let's look at this month's events in Campus Calendar. The School of Continuing Education will offer an information session for adults looking to become teachers through the new Pathways to Teaching in New Jersey program on Tuesday, November 11th at 6 p.m. in the Moses Family Meeting and Training Center, Room Tech 128. For more information, please call 201-447-7488. At the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater this month, artists such as Tom Rush and Charmaine Clamore will visit. Rush will take the stage on Thursday, November 10th at 7.30 p.m. Clamore will visit two days later on Saturday, November 12th at 7.30 p.m. To purchase tickets, log on to tickets.bergen.edu. The college will hold two open houses for prospective students this month, too. The first will take place Wednesday, November 9th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at Bergen Community College, Lyndhurst. The college's main campus at 400 Paramus Road, Paramus, will host the second open house on Wednesday, November 30th from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Moses Family Meeting and Training Center, Room Tech 128. Please call 201-447-7200 for more information. We'll close this episode, as we do every show, with our in-studio segment. This month's guest is English professor Ellen Feig, who also serves as the co-advisor of the college's honor society, Phi Theta Kappa. Welcome to the show, Professor. Thank you. It's really nice to be here. Oh, great to have you. So let's talk a little bit uh, first about Phi Theta Kappa. It's sure. the honor society for Bergen Community College and all two-year colleges. Um, your growth this year has been significant. Um, let's talk about that growth first, and then okay. we'll talk about maybe why um, it's, it's growing. Okay. This year we had about a 15 to 20 percent growth. We actually haven't closed out our registration period until next week, so it's still continuing, which is wonderful. And I think part of that has to do with scholarships. Phi Theta Kappa offers unbelievable scholarships to its members, and I think a lot of students are looking for alternative ways to pay for their continued education. Um, that's one of the things. And I also think the commitment to service has become something that's really vital and important to the growing membership. All right, we'll talk about service too. How, how many students are um, involved right now? Um, uh, as of last count, we had 145 paid new members. 
and we sent out invitations to, to about 445. So that's a significant increase mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, which is just incredible, wonderful. How does it, obviously it's, a, it's an honor society, mm -hmm. so it's for a, a high caliber, high achieving student. Uh, how do you uh, get membership into PTK? You actually have to maintain a certain grade point average over two semesters, and we actually look at courses that go towards your AA degree, depending upon what your degree is. Students who are in certificate programs usually are not eligible. Um, so there's certain requirements that you need to fulfill, and once you fulfill those requirements, Dr. Adamas actually sends out a letter inviting you to become a member and you go to ptk.org and sign up. It's really a simple process. Why do you think um, students are, do you think it's, it's giving them an advantage maybe in the job world or, or transfer to a four-year mm -hmm. school? Um, do you think it's giving them an advantage to say, I'm a PTK member, uh, it's something that goes on their transcript obviously. Sure. Um, you think that's one of the reasons that? I, I, do I think that much like being a Phi Beta Kappa member in a four-year college, there there's a networking uh, level to it where you actually the students really get to meet other students from other schools. They get to meet alumni. There's really an incredible alumni group of PTK members that are out there to help, and so there's a really strong networking element to it. And and. Again, I also think there's a level of community that's built in into Phi Theta Kappa, which is just amazing. Students make really lifelong friendships that I've seen just in my work with them that it's really awe-inspiring. Let's talk about the, the service end of mm -hmm. PTK. That's something that we'll try and get to uh, in a few minutes with you personally, but um, Talk about service at PTK. How important is it? Uh, what kind of projects do the kids take on? Okay. Uh, let's talk about that. Okay. Well, there are basically a, there are certain levels to PTK, and in order to be a five-star chapter, which at Bergen we're, we're pushing towards, Bergen has consistently had one of the highest um, performing chapters in the country. In fact, if you ask anyone who's involved in Phi Theta Kappa, they always come back to how hardworking Bergen students are. So this year we're actually looking at an Honors in Action project, which is our year-long service project, and we're focusing on completion. We're really pushing students to complete their associate's degree. And as part of that, we're including peer mentoring, global outreach component. Um, we're actually doing a high school outreach program November 14th at Englewood High School. We're going to be meeting with 125 students to actually help them look at what it means to succeed in college, how to be prepared for college. And then there's also a research component to that, looking at completion rates, what it means to succeed in college, what it means to actually complete your degree, and looking at ways that helping our students to do so. Let's kind of talk about service, I mm -hmm. mean, as a whole. I mean, you, um, aside from PTK as a professor, uh, have kind of brought that uh, element, not that the college didn't have it before, but something that's very important to you. You've been right. involved with a lot of different projects. Right. Why don't you talk about that and um, why it's important to you? Um, Service has been really something that's been important to me since I was a child. My mom is a teacher and she taught in a reservation, Indian reservation in Canada. And I think it's an inherent, maybe part of my genetic makeup in a strange way. And I feel really strongly that I, it's essential that I model service behavior before I can ask my students to serve. So I really started, I was a Malaria Grio Fellow with One.org, which is Bono's organization, and worked on malaria prevention throughout the world for a year, and then went on to be a Carl Wilkins Fellow for um, Saved Our Four and United to End Genocide, and been working on genocide prevention. Uh, we're working on a Genocide Awareness Week here, in fact, with the Center for Peace, Justice, 
and reconciliation in April. And recently, I actually started a foundation with two African educators called Wright Educational Foundation that's looking at keeping kids in school globally. And um, we're actually creating sustainable schools in Nigeria and Cameroon. We just started two there. We have about 100 students total. And our students actually are adopting those two schools. And we're doing letter writing campaigns as buddies, as pen pals. Um, and helping those students to sort of see that people care, people want to help them succeed. And I think that's what, um, you know, as a newer professor to Bergen, you've been here about six years, um, I think that's very important, obviously, uh, and I think that's something that uh, a lot of other professors are trying to um, model and Absolutely. get into. Um, so, Ellen, I think that's great work. And, Thank you. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. So. That's it, <laughs> again, for this month. Uh, don't forget to visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bergen Community College and tell us what you think. Again, thanks and take care.